YouTube. I wanted to quickly give you an introduction to the Windows Phone 7 development platform. I think it's important for .NET developers to really start uh, looking into the potential option of making Windows Phone apps since it's so easy if you know any C Sharp at all to get started. And if you are, specifically if you're a student, if you um, sign up on DreamSpark, you can release apps for free on the Windows Phone 7 marketplace. Otherwise, I think you have to pay a $100 um, initial sign up fee. But since I'm a student, I'm not quite sure the details of that. So if you're a student, definitely look into this. Uh, this is not an entirely selfless act, the making of this video. Uh, the more high quality apps there are, the more people will use the phone. And the more people use the phone, the more potential users we will all have. So I think it's important to really get uh, the solid basics clear and sort of provide you an introduction for a nice quality app. Also, as a side note, if you try to impose on my app ter territory, like with Christmas lyrics, Coffee Craze, or Quantum Jump, by making clones, I will figuratively crush you. So keep that in mind. Thanks. In this video, I intend to show you how to change pages using Silverlight for the Windows Phone 7. If you want more details, check out create.msdn.com for some specific resources. Okay, let's get started. So let's go File, New Project. Now I'm using Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate. Um, you can use the Express version, it's pretty much the exact same. I've recently been using XNA, but we are not going to do that this time. We're going to click, make sure we're in the C Sharp and go into Silverlight, and go Silverlight for Windows Phone, sorry, and then click Windows Phone Application. And let's give it a name. Let's call it Page Test, or whatever you want to call it. So, click OK. And it will build the application for us. So while we wait, let me show you the... Um, the emulator a little bit. This is what the emulator looks like. It took me a while to figure out. You can click this plus button. What I was trying to do for the longest time was I try, was trying to get proper sized screenshots and the default setting is actually at 66% size so yours will probably look about that big. And I realized when I tried to get my screenshots for publishing applications they were so small and I didn't really understand what was going on. Uh, really you want to go to 100% and then that's going to be an 800 or a 480 by 800, 480 wide by 800 tall is the screen size. And a really cool way to do a screenshot is you go to the start menu, all programs, accessories, snipping tool, and once that loads, I'm not sure how to work with my cam studio thing, but snipping tool is a really cool way. You just click new and then you mouse over the uh, emulator and it'll just sort of take a screenshot for you. So, that's a really cool tip for um developing your app. So I'm going to keep it at 66% because it's nice and small. So anyway, once it loads, this is the page you get. It's got page name already. So if you've ever used Silverlight, it, um, it's sort of like Microsoft's way to combat Flash. It, in some ways, it's very similar to Flash. Um, I haven't used it too much, but I've made it a couple apps with it, so I know the basic stuff. Um, it's a lot like HTML. It's XML pretty much. So I'll actually go into more detail in other uh, videos. Right now I'm just going to show you how to do pages. So let's change this page title. So you can see if you go into the code part, you can find the, the text block called page title and you just give it a different text. So let's call this main page. Um, don't click enter, click control S to save it. And once you do that, you see in real time, just like it was a HTML, ASPX page, um, it changes the title right there. So that's cool. I have my main page. And I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to go Toolbox, and I'm going to drag a button onto it. And you can move the buttons since it's pretty much absolutely positioned, which is pretty awesome. And you can see it's got all these little helpers to make it properly sized. And also it created this uh, XAML block for my button and so I can go through the properties and content is the name so I'll be go to page 2 for the name of the button and then you can see it of course real time updates and you can change other properties but I'm not going to bother with that since this is just sort of be a quick introduction I had to do a little research for this so hopefully this will help you out when I first started making apps that they don't make it obviously clear how to do page switching so let's right click page test and let's go add new item, sorry it's off screen, but you're just going to right click go add new item. And we're going to make a new portrait page and we will call this page 2.xaml. And page 2 just looks like the main page, exactly the same except for obviously without the button and it doesn't say main page. 
So we're going to click uh, page name and find the text block for it. And we're going to call it, instead of page name, we'll say page 2. So now we can differentiate between which page we're currently on. Now let's go toolbox and let's add a button. And once we add that button, let's change it to say, let's change the content to be go to main page. And then I'm going to also size the button. Uh, if you've never used Silverlight before, Expression Blend is a really cool tool that helps you design layouts for Silverlight apps. I haven't used it in a while, so I'm not sure if they've updated it, but it's pretty sweet. You should definitely check it out. And I also recommend going to that create.msdn.com page, as they have like everything you could possibly want to know about it, about creating Silverlight apps. So let's jump back in now to our main page, and let's double click the go to page two. So just like in uh, an ASPX page, once you double click the button one, it will automatically create the event for it. So again, we went to main page, double click the button, and it created this event. So navigation is pretty easy, but there are some things that are not obvious. So for starters, you have this concept in Silverlight of a navigation service, which basically just takes care of all the navigation needs for you. So we start by inside the button one click, we just say navigation service dot navigate, and it takes a URI. So we say new URI. Um, bracket quotation mark and we just say forward slash page two dot xaml xaml and we want to specify the uri kind as relative so we say uri kind dot relative close parenthesis close parenthesis semicolon save and you'll notice I use a forward slash here you cannot do dot forward slash you cannot do uh, tilde forward slash it has to you can't do just page two it has to be forward slash page two dot xaml. Of course, if you had inside folders, you'd be like forward slash folder one forward slash page two dot xaml or whatever. But in this scenario, we just say forward slash page two dot xaml and we give it a URI kind of dot relative. So, oops, we save and then we'll run the app. And now it says main page. For some reason, my um, debugger of Silverlight emulator has these weird like numbers on the side. I haven't been able to figure out what that is, but I know it doesn't show up in the final release, so just ignore that if you have that. And I just click go to page two, and you notice now it says it's on page two. And it was really easy. All we had to do was just say navigation service dot navigate. So you could probably derive the rest of this tutorial. I'm going to go stop the emulator, but I'll finish it anyway. Let's go to page two, double click go to main page. And we do the same exact thing, navigation service dot navigate, open parenthesis, new URI, open parenthesis, quotation mark. We just do the same thing, forward slash main page dot XAML, close parenthesis, comma, URI kind dot relative, close parenthesis, close parenthesis, semicolon, save, run. Now what we've done was we just created the navigation to go from page two to the main page. So I go, go to page two, go to main page, go to page two, go to main page. And you can see that is the basics to how navigation services work. If you are interested in developing Windows phone applications, please comment on my um, video so I can know to make more because I'm not sure how many people are actually interested in this topic. I know I most certainly am and I probably will be making more videos anyway just for fun. But if you are actually interested in this topic, please let me know and I will be sure to address any issues or questions you may have. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it helped.